Welcome everybody to Kingdom Talks. We're uh, Dean and I. Are, I guess tonight we're doing the Ultimate Impact and sharing a little bit from what we teach in there. Uh, one of the things that we do, obviously, is teach on the courts of heaven. And you know, we were that was one of the weeks that we were doing this last week with one of our groups, and yeah. I love the discussion. And it was so vibrant, was and good. there were a lot of questions that came forward, and we just felt. Hey, this feels like a good topic for tonight. Good time to come back around to it. Yeah. Um, you know, and the thing is, it was the Courts of Heaven. We were introduced to it through Robert Henderson, mm -hmm. and that was uh, brand new to us at the time. And once we got into it, we realized that there is so much more. Definitely. So many more things that uh, the Father had for us. And so Courts of Heaven is part of our Ultimate Impact series. It's definitely not the whole thing. It's, yeah. It is actually kind of a small piece of it. But it is one of the tools that we believe Father has given to us, it's all over in Scripture, um, to work with in order to battle some of the things that we're dealing with in the spiritual realm. Before we get in too deep in that, we do want to tell you we're getting ready for an amazing five-week journey. Five <laughs> and weeks. hopefully we're coming to a city near you. And we would love, love, love to, to see you, give you a hug and yeah. uh, really get to know you face to face. So the first one is we're gonna be in the Mill Conference Center in Starkville, Mississippi, November 3rd from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. So this is an opportunity for the community in that region and however far you feel like coming from. Um, hopefully, you know, our heart is that you will be able to engage with other people of like minds that are walking in the heavens and this will give you opportunity to do yeah. that. And actually, this is on the tail end of a meeting with Ignite Hubs International led by Lindy Masters. And we're going to be excited to, you know, do this on the tail end of that. So there may be some other people from that community that will be joining us as well. And if you've ever thought, hey, I want to know a little bit more about who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, we just so love Lindy Masters, Yay and Charles and John Ussery and Devin and um, Diane Buckner and her husband Robert and many team. other yeah. people. And to just plug you into somebody in the area that's doing this as well. So we've got that one on November 3rd. Yep. And then so in the next five weeks, we again will be traveling from place to place and hopefully to a city near you. And then on November 10th, we'll be at the Well of Nashville in Nashville, Tennessee. And that would be from 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time. Yes. That's going to be with Carl and Leanne Albrecht, and they're the ones that pastor the church. But we're hoping to get, get some other people involved, um, uh, put the invitation out to several other leaders in the region. You know, everyone is invited, and we're just asking that uh, you would come and, and converge in this place. And I'm sure that there's going to be some new people showing up that you're going to be able to build some new relationships with and just really encourage you to engage with that. Uh, put it on your calendar. Come join us. It's going to be a great time with, again, leaders and people of like mind from the Nashville region. Uh, again, if you want to come from far away, you're welcome to. <laughs> or nearby. <laughs> uh, and we won't, we're not going to list the other ones right now, but we will be in Moravian Falls on the following week. Mm -hmm. North Carolina. Uh, and then, and then uh, um, Colorado Springs the week after that. And Joyland. Yes, and I'm trying to think of the dates off off the top of my head. I don't have them in front of me. <laughs> uh, but these are on Sundays. These yeah. are always on Sundays. And then uh, um, San Diego. San Diego, yeah, San Diego on the second. Is it second or first? First. Yes. First of December. So please come join us. Uh, we would love to see you. We'd love to meet you. Love to get to know people and draw these heavenly communities together. That's right. It's good so, stuff. Having said all that, let's go ahead and jump in. Now, this is a time for each one of you to start writing down your questions. We're just going to go through an overview. This is just an overview of the courts of heaven. Uh, we are kind of known for being able to simplify things and uh, make it easy to understand. So I'm hoping that this is just gives you a good summary of the courts of heaven and helps you understand that uh, this is something real straight out of the Bible. Been there all the time. People have been engaging with the courts all along, but now we're doing it with more intentionality. Yes. And do you want to share just briefly why the courts of heaven are so important to you, well, particularly? They, they, yeah, they are definitely important to me. So I'll give a, a quick testimony. We'll go back to the main shot here so <laughs> you can see us. Um, and again, start putting your questions down. We have uh, Muriel, who's in the background, helping us out, and she will be keeping track of the questions to give them to us at the end of the uh, the presentation here. So. Um, yeah, so the courts of heaven are super dynamic and powerful to me because they are the thing that probably has changed my life 
more than any other thing. And obviously, this is all about the father and the son, uh, you know, engaging with them in the courts and through that process, been able to set me free. And many of you, if you have not heard my testimony on being delivered after, you know, basically 50 years, I mean, not totally 50 years, because uh, hopefully when I was a baby, I wasn't depressed. But the rest <laughs> of the time, as soon as I came in to understand, you know, a little bit of who I was, had some self-awareness, I struggled with depression, and I struggled with it all the way until I was 50 years old. Um, and then through the courts, was delivered of depression, have not had it again. There was, you know, if you listen to my testimony, there was one time it came back, six months after I first got delivered, came back for one day, and one day only. It's like showing up one day and one day only. Um, <laughs> And it was gone, you know, yeah. but it wasn't gone just because of, you know, it was gone. It was gone because I went back to the courts, realized I had opened up the door and allowed that to come in. Yeah. And through that, the Father gave me several different, uh, you know, things to look at and to pray about and to understand how to deal with the neuron pathways that trigger and open up doorways so that stuff comes back in. You know, we have that right. We have the choice to let it all of it in if we want to, or we can choose to say, you know, I've had enough of that. I think I'm, I think I'm done. <laughs> Don't want to do that anymore. So um, anyway, it's been super, super powerful from um, from my perspective, yes. and it's been a powerful, powerful tool. Hey, hey, Adam. Good to see you. Yes, and, and David from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome, yes. and, and, Terry. and Terry. Awesome. Terry, good, good, good. Um, yeah. So please let us know where you're where you're coming from, and uh, we will um, um, we will get going here. Someone says we've dropped out. If you're having any audio issues, let us know. Hopefully, that's just a one time thing. So here we go. Um, On to the slides. Why don't you go ahead and start us off, honey? So when we first started this, you know, we were like, courts of heaven, what is that? Where is that? That's not in the Bible, is it? And then we begin to, our eyes begin to be opened and see it everywhere. So this is a verse from Daniel 7, 9, and 10. I watched as thrones were put in place and the ancients, uh, ancient one sat down to judge. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels of blazing fire. Millions of angels ministered to him. Many millions stood to attend him. Then the court began its session and the books were opened. So we have court scenes all throughout the entire Bible and yet, you know, we've not really paid attention to them because we didn't have a grid for it. Yeah. And this is one of the things where as we uh, are stepping into the heavens, we get new revelation, we get further revelations, deeper revelation, and we're having it, you know, open up our own hearts and minds and spirits to receive what is there. And as we go further and further into the ultimate impact, we are showing you how so many of these verses that in the yeah. past we just, you know, we had to just brain shut off every time we saw them just because we didn't have a grid for them. We're opening those up because we're realizing, uh, as somebody we were talking to earlier today said, you know, believe it or not, the Bible's true. <laughs> so we have to then ask Father, what do you mean by this? Because mm -hmm. some of it we don't really understand. So the next one is understanding the heavens, uh, you know, and they have the courtrooms, you know. So w when we look at the, the, the um, uh, you know, the heavens and the courtrooms, you normally find in a courtroom you have a judge. And in this case, our Father, God, is the judge. So in Daniel 7, it says, Until the Ancient One, the Most High, came and judged in favor of his holy people. So this is a, actually got a lot of things in this verse, yes. but uh, it says he judged in favor well, you know, we obviously know that in a courtroom that if you get a favorable judgment that you are set free. And many of you have heard me say this many, many times, but in the Hebrew, the word judge is Dan. And the Hebrew letters for that are the word or the, the letters Daleth and Nun. And so the letter Daleth actually represents a door. And the letter Nun actually, you know, represents life. So the church unfortunately has kind of twisted that all around to where judgment is something we all fear when in reality we are being judged to life because the father wants to judge every single one of you to life i am happy to go into the courts these days and just spread out my arms and say lord judge me judge me because what i know of him is that when he judges me he will find the things that keep me from living life abundantly and he will expose that, begin to show it, and then later we're going to sh talk about it. But we begin to just simply uh, come into agreement with uh, you know whatever he's showing us, and, or sometimes the enemy will you know accuse us, or we'll we'll get accusations from different people, any number of things. Yeah. But 
I'm rambling, so I'll stop. <laughs> well, you were right on task with the, the accuser. <laughs> so <laughs> we do have an, an accuser uh, from Revelation 12:10. It talks about the accuser and about him being cast down. And there's many different interpretations of that. Some people say, well, this verse says he was cast down, so how could he be in the courts? And, you know, I'm, we're not going to get into a lot of that. But, you know, in a courtroom, you could have many different types, types of accusers, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, that the enemy is one accuser. Also, we can be our own accuser. Right. When we've, yeah. you know, said words, um, you know, like, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I'm fat. Those become testimony in court that accuse mm -hmm. us and yep. prevent pre prevent us from walking in the fullness of God I'm broke, God I don't have enough us. money. Yep. Those are pretty popular ones along, among a lot of Christians. So we want to stop saying those things and giving testimony for the enemy to use against us. That's right. Um, I, you know, I do want to say, too, that when talking about the accuser being cast down, we're, we're teaching some things where we have to understand that there are multiple layers and multiple yeah. dynamics meetings, to things. Yeah. And that some of the things that we understand now are actually tools that God uses and gives to us in order to understand Him more and in order to be set free. Um, you know, the idea that God is a strong tower, well, that gives us an understanding that, you know, He is, you know, it's a good place to go hide in Him. <laughs> but is He really, you know, brick and mortar? He's stacked up, you know, 20 feet high, who knows how high. But is He really that, or is He just giving us a model or something to understand Him by? Yeah. So we have to understand that God is much more, so much more than we could ever imagine. But the main thing is he wants us to understand him as a father, you know, that we are family. And that's what he has asked of us. And so it's, it's a wonderful way to, to see the father because he is that to us yeah. and he wants to be known by that. So the next one is the accuser. Uh, categorio is the Greek word and it means the, to accuse before a judge. So we know that um, this is our accuser, and he is accusing us, and what is he accusing us of? That's something and a reason for us to go into the heavens for, to find out what is he holding against us? What legal right does he have to hold against us? And at the end, we'll go over some things uh, of why you'd go to the courts, and we'll take another look at that question, go a little bit deeper. So there's also witnesses in a courtroom, and we see that in Scripture, the great cloud of witnesses, Hebrews 12.1. Um, the accuser of the brother in Revelation 12.10, as we looked at, is, is a form of witness. And then we are witnesses, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. good or for bad. Uh, Revelation 12.11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Amen. And then in the courtroom also we have Jesus as our advocate. It says in Hebrews 7.25, Therefore he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him, and he lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. We don't want to get the impression here that God is out to get us mm -hmm. and that Jesus is standing in the middle to save us because that's not true. But what it is true is that Jesus is there as our advocate against the enemy, mm -hmm. and he is there to on our behalf to help us make our case and uh, believe me, he wants nothing more than for you to simply repent, which we're going to get to in just a minute. Yeah. Because when we repent, it gives him permission just to go wipe out every agreement, covenant, contract you've ever made with the enemy so that um, uh, you can be set free. And what I love about this is he lives forever to intercede with God Yes. on our behalf. Amen. They're and working, both of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Holy Spirit working on our behalf. <laughs> Amen. So in this courtroom, we see just as on the earthly courtroom, you have all these characters in heaven. We have them too. We have the judge as our Father God, the etern etern attorney. attorney or mediator, Jesus, uh, the accuser, Satan, witnesses, Satan, great cloud of witnesses, us. And then we have records, books, our books. There's many verses on books in heaven. And so mm -hmm. all of those things that make up a courtroom on earth is Are a there. part of the heavenly. heavenly. Yeah. So courtroom applications. There are real life court issues. Um, you know, so there are people that have been in court on earth mm -hmm. and we've worked with them in the courts in heaven to deal with things at that level first yes. in the spiritual realm and then go into the earthly courts. And there's been testimony after That's testimony awesome. after testimony on those. Uh, roadblocks to destiny. If you know that in your scroll you're supposed to be doing a certain thing or, or you know, in a certain place and you're, for whatever reason you're not able to get there, mm -hmm. that's a big reason to go into the courts and say, Father, judge me. What is there that the enemy is holding against me? What legal right does he have to keep me from being able to do whatever it is you're not able to accomplish? Mm -hmm. 
and then inner healing and deliverance great one that's where I got my deliverance because again the inner healing and the deliverance came from the fact that I came out of agreement yeah. with entities such as the spirit of depression spirit of anger came out of agreement with those and was delivered that way so great great I, I, I just can't say enough about it just because <laughs> uh, you know I spent years in counseling different types of counseling mm -hmm. Sozo, Theophostic, Elijah House all of them did great and helped out a lot. Helped to manage. Helped to manage it, <laughs> but never delivered me from it. And this was the first time that I actually got deliverance. Physical healing, DNA cleansing, land cleansing, etc. Prodigals, a lot of things that we can dive into here. Uh, but um, just know that the courts are a great, awesome tool. And if they work for you, we, we say go for it. Um, but just know that also, the courts of heaven don't work for everybody. And it's they're, not a magic not, wand. Or, no, not a magic wand. And honestly, you know, you can deal with all your destiny issues in the courts of heaven, but if you're just sitting on your butt doing nothing, <laughs> um, God's not going to force you to, to fulfill your destiny. And so there's a walking out of all of these things. Yeah, yeah. So the old paradigm of warfare that, you know, we were doing back in the, you know, 90s, 80s, 90s. Yeah. It was a lot of shouting at the enemy, going right into battle. Uh, but the result was often a lot of wounded, weary people, mm -hmm. broken. And you go, yeah. we worked so hard. We prayed in the spirit. We made declarations. We did all kinds of things and went crazy. <laughs> but we didn't see, you know, the we results. had some yeah. results. Yeah, definitely had some. But not not to the level that we wanted to see. And many people just became discouraged mm -hmm. and weary. And so the new paradigm is to get the legal victory first. Get that in heaven. Yeah. And so then important. we have victory on earth. And it's so much easier than fighting it out with the devil. <laughs> because so much of the time we will find that we go into the heavens, we get the legal right there, mm -hmm. and it takes care of itself in the earth. Yeah. can't tell you how many times that has happened. It's been really, really phenomenal. Um, I was thinking of getting into some testimonies, but uh, we actually got a fair amount to, more to cover, I think. So let's keep going here. Maybe we'll get into some testimonies yeah. here later. Uh, by the way, if you, again... If you have a question about this and you're wondering, you know, how do the courts work for you, uh, certain, um, uh, whether or not to, it would work for certain uh, situations, uh, whatever it is, please go ahead and post your questions in the chat room on, on Facebook, or excuse me, on uh, YouTube, or in the comment area on YouTube or Facebook. <laughs> we'll get it. And we will do our best to scramble them up just as well as I've scrambled that up. <laughs> Woo! Tongue tied today. Okay. So, metanoia is a Greek word, and it basically means to change one's mind and includes reformation. So, it's not just a... Uh, I'm uh, sorry I did that. You know, and it's not just a flippant thing, but it's actually a transformation. You know, it's a transformation and a reformation of the way you think. And in Luke 3, it says, Turn away from your sins, turn to God, and prove it by a changed life. We really want to get to that place where the repentance, metanoia, is something that is so powerful that we have transformed our heart and our mind to change directions and go in the way of God. And I can tell you, I'm going to get a little off track here. <laughs> We've been talking about this quite a bit lately. But when you learn to love yourself fully and completely, that alone is going to help change so many things in your life. You've got to really hear, believe, and understand that God loves you unconditionally. That He loves you, loves you, loves you so much that you need to receive that in such a big way to know that you are lovable and that He loves you so that you can begin to truly love yourself because you're not going to be able to love others around you, really, you know, from a, a true heartfelt love until you love yourself. And I can say that from experience because, again, living in depression, part of the big deal was hating myself all that time. And finally coming to a place of receiving the love of God to a point where I learned to love myself. And I literally wake up in the morning and usually I'm bouncing around, you know, in my, my spirit. It's just, it's just a beautiful thing Excited to wake to up. Excited to be alive. Excited to be alive. And, uh, you know, I, I joke around, but, you know, waking up and saying, dang I love myself <laughs> you know it's just a powerful thing to be in that place to honestly be able to say that and when you are able to say that your metanoia your mm -hmm. repentance will come so naturally yeah. 
that you will, because out of love for God, out of love for yourself, out of love for others, your mind will be transformed so that you really have very little, if no interest, in the sinful things that you were engaged with before. It's not this, it's not this blanket thing of grace where you know everything's just covered and you just go on about your day and just have at it. No, if you are truly walking in the Father's love and love yourself, you will be converted, you will be transformed and reformed so that you are able to walk in such a way that these things just begin to grow faintly dim, as the yeah. song used to say. <laughs> so this next verse, some people may have a little challenge with, and it's agree with your adversary quickly from Matthew 5.25. And we just want to say there's different context to this, and if you remember the Hebraic way of thinking, there's 72 different levels of meaning. Right. And so we're going to pull out a meaning from this, and if you... You know, it doesn't work for you, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But when we learn how to agree quickly with our accuser, and to me, it's in the natural as well as in the spiritual realm, it's just being able to say, yeah, I'm guilty. Let me deal with that in the courtroom. Right. And I want to tell a story, but do you have more comment on that? No, or? well, go ahead. I'll so, comment later. <laughs> so um, some of you have heard this, but it, and it's kind of humorous because we had, we'd been doing this for a little while and learning how even interpersonally to agree quickly because I grew up from a family where I needed to be perfect and I never wanted to um, admit guilt because that would mean I wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, I even, you know, in my elementary school years, if, if I found a way that I could cheat, I would because I had to be 100%. If I had a 98, it would be just devastating to me. And I justified it because it was an A regardless, but it was still this need to be perfect. And so this, this was a really hard breakthrough for me to be able to, if somebody accused me of something, to be able to say, oh, I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> and so we were actually at this big conference, and we I, one of the things I loved at this place was worship. That was my main you know, reason to be there yeah. was because I loved yeah. the worship. I loved it. You know, it was a place nobody else knew me, and I could just go wild and crazy and, and have an awesome time. And somebody had texted us and asked us to, um, to pray for them, and Gil promised that he would do it by a certain time. Well, there was a two hour time difference too. <laughs> but we had forgotten about it at the break and it was just going into worship time and Gil goes, let's go do that right now. We need to go do that right now so we keep our word. And I'm like, absolutely no way, this is worship time. <laughs> and you know, there were some things that were said back and forth and we ended up just going, hey, you go your way, I'm going my way because <laughs> we were a little, well, on the hot side. <laughs> Doing righteous things on the hot yeah, side. Yeah, over worship and prayer. Can you believe that? And so, anyway, we eventually worked it out. But, you know, later that day, Father said to me, you missed an opportunity to agree quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had to go, you know, when I looked at it, my motivation wasn't, my. it was a righteous motivation to worship God and enter in. And, and was there some selfishness involved? Yeah, but it was like, maybe just a little bit, a little bit, maybe this big. <laughs> but, it, you know, it really, when somebody's accusing us, it's just demonstrating, hey, there's something there. And whether it's, you know, 10% yeah. or 50% yeah, or 1%, I want to get that accusation out of right. me. Yeah. And so when we agree quickly, that's awesome. Yeah, and also you stop the, the thought process because you start trying to analyze it and, and get logical and rational about well I'll agree with this much of it or no I don't really think that's no it's it's best just to come into agreement in the sense that we're not saying that you want to come into because this is a big argument yes, I hear a lot of times yeah. we're not saying that uh, you're agreeing with the the enemy on all the yes, stuff that I'm he has. selfish I'm, I'm not making that pronouncement right right yeah. and, and and or that you're agreeing to do evil things with him I mean that's ridiculous that's not what anybody's saying when mm -hmm. they use this verse for that and again a little out of context but the point is real and that is right here let me just go back to this real quick um, this verse, 1 John 1, 9, we all know it. If we confess our sins, if we confess, what are we doing? We're pleading guilty. Yeah. We are coming into agreement with the adversary, okay? So that's what that means. I, I don't know how else to get around that, uh, but it's very clear. If we confess our sins, then he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. So again, it says right there, confess to agree with, not to not deny it. Because when we deny it, if there is any ounce of truth, guess what? The enemy gets to hold on to that and keep using it against you. That's right. So why would you want that? 
So why not just confess? Because if you confess and it, 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 it is true, then you get to remove that out of the enemy's hand so he can no longer use it against you because the blood of Jesus is going to cover that and wash Amen. it away. Amen. So one of the big things for me is the visualization part of being in the courtroom. And when I confess or you know, and I repent for coming into agreement with a specific spirit or, or whatever it is that I might have allowed in, a spirit of anger, a spirit mm-hmm. of lust, you know, any of those spirits, then I confess it, I repent of it, and I ask the blood of Jesus to go over and just wash that thing, whatever it is, an agreement, a covenant, a contract, and wash it out of my existence in every realm, in every dimension, in every form of time, and I watch it, I see it dissolving those covenants and contracts till they're, they're gone, completely eliminated out of all existence, and you have a clean slate from that day forward, from that moment forward. Now, dealing with all the neuron pathways that you've been, uh, the habitual things that you've been trained on, um, you know, that's a whole other thing. And we have some training and teaching on that as well, how to clear those neuron pathways so that you don't keep triggering and opening up the door for those, uh, those spirits to come right back in. But again, even if you do, there's no condemnation. There's yep. no uh, um, there's no judgment. It simply is a process of confessing it and repenting of it, and Jesus will wash it away. He has promised that, yeah. and that's where we just put our you know our trust in Him that He will take care of each and every one of those things. Mm-hmm. And so this is really joyful repentance. We absolutely love this because it is ver- it is good. it's removing yeah. <clears throat> the accusations of the enemy against our life. Hallelujah. Yeah. It puts us in agreement with God and his power to change our lives. It closes the doors of access the enemy has to harass us or prevent our destiny. And it releases us from iniquity in our family bloodlines. And so it is awesome, mm-hmm. awesome, awesome and amazing. And we call it joyful repentance again because it's like if, you know, in the past, if someone came and accused me of something, you know, the defenses go up, mm-hmm. the, you know, the, the, the guns come out, you know, the defensive side comes out. And um, that's that's what it was in the past. And in, and, and in that situation, not only are you uh, uh, kind of compounding the issue, but you're giving the enemy more ammunition, ammunition. to work with yeah. versus when you get an accusation, just say, I am so sorry. I did not know that I was being so selfish when I did that. And go straight to the courts and ask for the, you know, come uh, repent for what you've done yeah. and ask for the blood of Jesus to clear it and cleanse it out of your existence. And when you do that, you take that out of the enemy's hands. So it becomes a point of when you really realize what is going on, when you really realize what is going on, that every time you are repenting and coming out of agreement with something that you're in agreement with, mm-hmm. you are taking a legal right and a tool of the enemy out of his hands that he can no longer use against you. That's pretty exciting. So yes, be joyful about it. Be excited about it. And then honestly, in relationships with one another, you know, it's definitely improved our marriage when we begin to practice agree quickly with your accuser. Uh, Because otherwise, the defenses are up. But as soon as you say, oh wow, I didn't realize I was coming across that way. I repent for that. Yeah. Um, then all the defenses come down and we're able to work through, hear one another's heart. Otherwise, it's like one yeah. up, 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 yeah. up, up, Never stops if you want to keep going that direction. <laughs> it will not stop. Yes. So that is a very short summary. Hopefully that uh, was a, a small fire hose, not too much of a big fire hose to blow you away. Uh, and I don't know how many of you that this was something so new to, or if it is uh, something that most of you are already used to. And you know, um, Leanne is asking a really good question. So how exactly do you go to the courts? And so we didn't get a slide for this, but I think we'll just kind of walk you through kind of what we we do in the courtroom. And again, it's not about a formula. It's not all about all kinds of things, but it's it's step-by-step going with Father. And so where we always start with, um, typically, although I just said we don't, you know, no formula. <laughs> I should say we typically go to the throne of grace because we want to know, is this a court case or is there another way that Father wants to handle this? And so that's the first place to connect with Father relationally yeah. and go, hey, Father, this is going on. I really don't know what to do. Should we go to court? Yeah. So, um, Leanne, we, I don't know specifically, you know, who you are and where you're at. Um, 
Why do we have to worry about going to the courts? You know, one of the things I, I say about the, the advocate situation or that the idea that Jesus has done it all, I don't know if that's where you're going with your question there, but, um, you know, when people say, well, Jesus did it all, I don't have to do anything else. Well, I have to say, well, how's your life going? How's, how's that working for you? Because if you're not walking in perfect abundance and harmony with, you know, in perfect power and authority, then um, I would say that we haven't figured it out yet and that there's something yet to be done. If you've got any aches or pains, you know, then there's probably something yet to be done. So what is it that's yet to be done? This is the way I describe it to people. The fact is you are perfect and you are seated next to Christ in the heavens. Done deal. Done, done, done. However, in this earth and in this realm, we are still walking it out and learning to process these things. And we are um, uh, 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 having to break out of what I call the matrix of lies. The enemy has placed so many lies upon us that we do not really fully believe and understand who we truly are. We're starting to get some, gra some, some ideas. We're starting to grasp a little bit of it. But we honestly do not know fully who we are and what we're capable of. Because Jesus said that we would be doing miracles like he did and much more. I don't know one person on the earth who's fully walking in that authority. So we've got something that we need to figure out. And uh, it doesn't mean we ha don't have salvation. No, it has nothing to do with our salvation. We are saved in Christ, period. But And I would say the courtroom is not so that heaven acknowledges something. It's really for us. us. Yeah. It's for us to to see that what's going on in the whole panorama and our wrong beliefs and how we've come into agreement with the enemy and how we come out of agreement with the enemy. And so do you have to go to court for all of that? No, there's other ways that you can repent without actually you know, seeing and doing all that. But we found that to be really helpful, mm -hmm. personally. Now, I've got, Muriel is helping us, and she's sending questions so, so we, because we can't keep track of everything and do the show at the but same we'll time. we'll get to them. So if we're looking down, it's because we're looking at your questions as they come in. Uh, so Laura uh, says, why do you think this is happening now in the body of Christ? I feel like we could have fast forwarded through a whole lot of unnecessary spiritual warfare, or was it part of the foundations? And I'd say yes. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, sometimes we don't understand how the Father works, but we do know that He is giving us greater and greater revelation about Himself all the time. And every time we think, oh, we've arrived, this is the greatest revelation, now we've got, you know, for us, we stepped out of uh, just your, your uh, um, uh, very fundamental, you know, Christian church where there was no operation of the Spirit at all, hard to, hardly anyway. And we stepped from that into spiritual things, and we thought, oh, we've arrived. Yeah. And then, you know, there was another thing, another thing, and then we get the courts of heaven, and then, you know, it just keeps going, and we've realized it's going to go forever. We mm -hmm. will constantly be getting more and more revelation of our Father, because He is infinite. That revelation is going to be infinite as we grow. And so this, to me, has just been another phase of the revelation. Why did it go in this order? I think part of it is process, that we have character building yeah. that we need to do. And if there's no challenges, then, you know, you just don't grow if you yeah, don't have we some challenges. we learned a lot through that era mm -hmm. of spiritual warfare um, that was probably good, but now we have some parts of it that we need to unlearn and to do differently. So that declaring and decreeing and all that is definitely a piece of it because once you get what the Father's doing, as Jesus did, he did only what his Father was doing. So we see what the Father's doing by going into the heavens and we, we then pull that into the earth and we declare it and decree it into the earth. And then from that, we also check with Father to see, now is there anything I need to do physically? Because now I've done the spiritual part of bringing heaven to earth. How much do I need to do physically? And off, you know, seriously, we don't get a lot in, you know, we haven't with the groups that we've been with. We don't get a whole lot of uh, information in terms of what we have to do next physically. Mm -hmm. uh, is there stuff? Yeah, but uh, we're, again, we're looking to see what the Father's doing. And most of the time when we deal with it in the spirit, it works itself out in the natural. So Leanne also has asked, but how do you go there? Is there a process of getting there? And we just want to kind of break <laughs> off some things. There's, um, heaven is not way, 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 way far away. The kingdom of God, you know, is right here, is with right here. you. Yeah. And so it's just changing. 
scripture is very clear that we're seated with him in heavenly places. Right. We Can are. I back up a little bit? Yeah. Um, because, you know, there are a lot of people that talk about stepping in. There are a lot of people that talk about going up in a whirlwind. You know, we see different uh, in symbols in yeah. Scripture about how people went into the heavens. Jacob's ladder. There's there's a lot of different ways that uh, we see in Scripture that people went into the heavens. Jesus, you know, was evidently going there quite often to see what his father was doing. And so what we have realized, because it, like Adina was saying, that heaven is just a realm away we are already in heaven and heaven is in us you know it says the kingdom is within you so it is actually us shifting perspective and seeing ourselves seated next to christ and living from there and seeing things from there so that we have that heavenly perspective all the time i do my best and i and i feel like i i do fairly good job is it perfect mm -hmm. absolutely not of looking at things from that place. It's like when something comes up, I will immediately try to go there. Not try to go, I do go, but I try to remember to do it all yeah. the time, that I would go there and look at it from that perspective with my father and with Yeshua and to get counsel from them on how to deal with a situation there. But it is by faith in Christ, by the blood of Jesus, he tore the veil in Hebrews. He tore the veil so that we could enter in and come boldly before the throne of God. That is what we've supposed to have been doing all along. We have permission, and not only do we have permission, we are expected. We are we belong there. Mm -hmm. The Father expects us to come. We should be going there on a daily basis. In fact, we should be learning to live at that level and see everything from that perspective, from heaven's perspective. Yeah. So it's a process of our spirit and our imagination um, shifting our focus into mm -hmm. good, the heavenly good. realm. And so if you have ever seen a throne, a golden throne, mm -hmm. you can imagine Father sitting on the throne, and that can be the throne of grace. Now some people go into great detail and go, it, it looks like this, and this is what it looks like. But we really believe that God speaks to each one of us um, individually in language that we can understand. And so if, if I see Jesus and he has a white robe on with a, you know, a red sash and you see him in jeans and t-shirt, um, that doesn't mean that we're seeing two different Jesuses. <laughs> it's that he's communicating different things. Like if I'm seeing him in a white, white robe with a red sash, I'm probably thinking of the traditional biblical thing and that's fine. Uh, but if you see him in a shirt and t-shirt, what it may be communicating is, Jesus is just coming at you as you are. Just coming Yeah, there's no in a you don't, casual way to yeah. and it so you feel that you can approach him without feeling like, oh no, you know. And so it's just different ways that we see things in the heavenly realm. And I can tell you this is a major, 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 major part to get breakthrough in this area. Uh there's so many things that God has done for me to, to give me a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. And my wife, I think, is right on board with all the changes that I have gone through in the last few years. <laughs> yes. Because I used to be very analytical. Some people call it anal. I used to be very logical, and everything had to line up. And if it didn't make sense, I was a skeptic. I would throw it out. I had to stop that because the Father actually said to me at one point, he says, do you want to continue being a skeptic and miss out on everything I have for you? Or do you want to step into what I what I have? And in order to step in, I had to let my carnal thought process, I had to let it go. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you throw reason and everything out the window, but I was putting it first. And so I had to stop putting it first and I had to decide that I was going to step in to the spiritual realm and honestly believe that the spiritual realm is more real than this realm. And once I did those two things, get rid of the skepticism, step into the spiritual realm, and live from that perspective, knowing that I'm a spiritual being having a physical experience. I am not, you know, I am not just, you know, the physical, and you know, that's all there is. Because a lot of people believe that's all there is. I, you know, I used to be that way, and unfortunately, that's a sad way to live. Yeah. Because once stepping into the spirit. It's just been phenomenal. It's just been life changing. It's been free, yes. you know, freeing to me that I've been able to uh, find this new world, this new mm -hmm. universe, so to speak, that is um, unending. It's it's totally um, infinite, and it's part of who my God is. Is He is yes. infinite, so there's there's no end to the exploring, 
and there's no end to the amount of love that he wants to pour out and again that just comes back to yeah. love 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 <laughs> So we see some people from Kentucky and from Idaho, from Indiana, and Leanne's asking about if we're coming to Boise, Idaho anytime soon, and we would absolutely love to. Um, so, you know. If there's a group there, let us know, yeah. because uh, that's one of the things that we're doing with Kingdom Equipping Center on the Road, is going to different communities and putting the kind of the clarion call out that uh, we're gonna be there and for anybody who's in that region to come together so that all of you who are in that area who are of like mind can get together and begin to build community because it's so important. We yeah. really need each other right now. So the closest we're coming is uh, Tacoma, Washington. We'll be there in February, the first weekend in February, yeah. four to six or something like that. Anyway, I don't remember the dates, but it's on our website. And uh, the registration for that is open. We'll also be doing a Kingdom talks or Kingdom Equipping Center on the road right. in Tacoma. So if you can't come for the retreat, but you could come for, you know, Sunday afternoon, that would be awesome. We'd love to love to connect with you. Oh, this time's going by fast. Um, there all was right. one other question about, um, is Ecclesia a movement? Yeah, is Ecclesia a movement and what is it exactly? You want to do that one or you want me to? Good. I am super excited about Ecclesia because if we go back to the New Testament and look at what Jesus said, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my ecclesia. And ecclesia, we do have to understand, is a government term. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Anybody who knows Greek will tell you this was a government term used for assemblies and councils, you know, for the cities and so forth. So what was Jesus saying? That upon this rock he was going to build his ecclesia, his government. Well, you know, without going into an, a huge Bible study, again, we have a whole section in our Ultimate Impact where we deal and with this. And on one of the Kingdom Talks we do it on, yeah. Yeah, on one of the Kingdom Talks as well. But but the fact is, Jesus left the government up to us. Yeah. You know, you know, in the, the, the church age, we've been called ambassadors, and there's a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. But we're even more than that. We are His government, wherever two or three are gathered. You know, there's a whole study on how in the Roman government, you know, if two people had served in the military or if a person had served in the military for two years, then they had authority. And if you had two people in another region who was under Roman control but uh, was not, um, uh, didn't have any government there, that those two people could then enact Roman government. Yeah. So Jesus builds on that. He says, wherever two or three are gathered together, I will be in the midst of you. And so it's in those groups where two or three are in agreement with one another that we can enact government law but the thing is we don't want to just do it on our own yes. and that's what we see a lot of people doing is just because they've been a christian for 30 40 years they think they have all the right answers well jesus himself didn't do that jesus himself only did what he saw his mm -hmm. father doing so why would we think that we would be any better than him and that we could just act on what we think. So we really, really encourage, it's our third plumb line, ask the Father. Definitely. Go see what the Father's doing and then bring that into the earth. And we have found over and over and over where we thought we had some great ideas. We go into the heavens, we ask the Father, and he's always had some better ideas, yeah. um, at least nine times out of 10. Yeah, I agree with you, Susan, that this is much better than waiting on God to destroy uh, the earth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Definitely. We, we were just talking about this today on our walk that uh, maybe this uh, next stage of Christianity will be referred to as the restorers, you know, the, the, the age of restoration. Because once we learn truly who we are, that we're supposed to be going into the heavens and bringing heaven to earth mm -hmm. according to the Father's will, that, um, that, you know, we will begin to restore the kingdom in the earth yeah. as it was supposed to be in the beginning. Creation and everything else, and it's exciting. And we were just sharing this with somebody, and they said, no, maybe it's the resties, because we rest <laughs> on our throne <laughs> with the Father, and we restore, so it's rest and restore. Resties. That is really good. Really, I don't, I'm not sure how many people will get that when you say it. <laughs> but it's good so, stuff. So what else do we have? Um, um, So anyway, I hope that helped on the Ecclesia. Um, and I would say on that, that a lot of, there's different groups who interpret Ecclesia in different ways. And so not to get locked into a certain interpretation of what that has to look like, but that it's beautiful as our groups gather together and begin to, you know, administrate from heaven to earth. Um, it is very, very cool. Yeah. So Leanne says she doesn't know of anybody else, and I think you're talking about, uh, yeah, Boise, Idaho. Um, 
I, I would just say if there's anybody on here right now that I, if you are from that area, uh, please just put out a shout out on Facebook. Let let uh, Leanne know that you're in that area. Maybe you guys can connect and, and, and I think get we do know some of the. Um, in Boise, Idaho, some of the group from Ignite um, Hubs. Ignite Hubs, yeah, probably. And so we're going to actually be meeting them in Starksville soon. So we may be able to put you in touch with them. So if you want to email us at info at kingdomequippingcenter.com, uh, we might be able to connect you because we, you know, it's it's not like their group, our group. That's we're we're one body. Right. And so if there's other groups doing similar stuff, we want to connect you, and that's. Part of our role and anyone here in Tulsa absolutely uh, there are some people in Tulsa yeah um, although they're, some of them are <laughs> they're actually <laughs> moving, moving to, to maybe no. we shouldn't say that well we <laughs> haven't given out any names but yes there are people there but they're planning to move to Colorado Springs when we move there or sooner than us but yeah, yeah and I'll, I'm gonna put it out again I I'm I'm, I'm just gonna say it we're not real we're not we're not sure what the father's doing yet. We're it's starting to kind of the scroll for what yeah. he has for us in Colorado Springs is starting to to kind of unravel a little bit. You know, we're getting yeah. to open it and begin to see pieces of it. But um, we do know that there are people that are going to be moving to Colorado Springs with us. Yeah. And and I would just say, Kim, that uh, we're going to be driving through Tulsa, and um, we will we will wave at you in the spirit <laughs> and bless you as we're on our way. Yeah. So. In Columbia, South Carolina. Ooh. We, we will, will hmm. be, let's We're see. We're going to be in Moravian Falls. Uh, North I know that's Carolina, yeah. North Carolina. And we will be driving in uh, South Carolina a little bit, um, visiting Lily Weeks, who is Chris Carter's... Um, publisher. Publisher, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. says uh, let's see Halika says you guys had a guest on that lives near Boise forgot the name yes he actually is going to be back on I think within the next three weeks I, I, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head either that's bad but uh, yeah there is someone uh, Coeur d'Alene actually I think is closer where, where they're from so that's not really Boise I think there's probably a good hour or two's drive between Boise and Coeur d'Alene I'm not sure I'd have to look on a map someone can help me there <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, we do just want to say that we're going to put up, if you're near Starks, Starkville, Mississippi, um, or near Nashville, Tennessee, we are going to be coming through there soon. And on our website, kingdomtalksmedia.com or kingdomequippingcenter.com, we're hoping to um, post, you know, it'll be for free, but it'll at least help us to know who's coming and when. Yeah. Um, we'll have a little place where you can register and that that's really helpful for us to just know ahead of time who's coming and then we'll be on the lookout for you all right so that first one november 3rd is at mill conference center in starkville mississippi we'll be there from 2 30 to 4 30 so please come on out and join us it'll be a great time um really really hope to see you there if you're in the area and then the next one is in nashville and it's going to be at the Well of Nashville. So again, watch our website and on we'll have the details on Facebook, mm -hmm. and we'll be getting the details out there. Registration deal; it's free, but uh, just lets us know you're coming. So and yes, Dan Dean was the guest. Oh, Dan Dean. Yes, that, that's right. So that's somebody else. <laughs> there are actually two people in that area. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, Dan Dean, love Dan Dean. Great, great heart. I mean, we're very similar spirits. So. Uh, watch him on on uh, the Kingdom Talks. Yes. It's a great interview. We've had two with him, so yeah, you can get connected with him. So if we come up that way, hopefully, I would believe yeah, Dan would probably maybe even host us yeah. if there's not another place to host us up there. So we obviously got to have a place to uh, meet, and we prefer to meet where other groups are already at, so that if there's other people in the area that want to connect, that's the whole purpose is connecting these heavenly communities. We'll be in the Houston area. On your birthday, huh? <laughs> Oops, I gave it away. <laughs> December 29. And then we will <laughs> be... <laughs> wow. I'm going to get in big trouble. Oh, I guess I have to agree quickly with... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're family, right? And so then we'll be in Colorado Springs um, a couple of different times that we'll be having uh, Kingdom Equipping Center on the road. Yep. And we'll do a Portland one and a Tacoma one. We're even going to hopefully get up to um, Vancouver, B.C. Yeah. We just met some awesome friends up there. 
and looking forward to connecting again. Okay, so we got like uh, 10 minutes at the most here, and someone says, uh, what was your favorite encounter? This is Kim. Uh, what was your favorite encounter with the Father? And Adina, if you have time. So, so what my, your, my what favorite your, encounter with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the first day I met you. Yes, so thank wonderful. you, oh wow. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, encounters with Father have just been off the chart. Um, a lot of them I haven't shared just because they've been really, really personal. And, you know, they're in my journal. One of these days I may share them. But fantastic, fantastical stuff, really. Just crazy stuff. That I mean, crazy good is what I mean. But um, I would have to say probably one of my favorite ones was uh, we were actually on another road trip. And uh, driving down the road, and, uh, and I'm just having this great time. Adina was doing something else, and, and, you know, I was having this great time encounter with the Father. And, you know, I'd already been inside of Him. You know, I'd sat on His lap before, and then I went into Him before, and those are all fantastic experiences. And so I was just asking, it's like, Father, is there any way, is there any way to get even closer, even closer? <laughs> and He goes, yes. And immediately, you know, in the Spirit, my body dissolved into molecules, he dissolved into molecules, and this whirlwind began to just mix us. Becoming one. So we became one. <laughs> and it was just phenomenal. That, to me, has been probably the most memorable and best experience that I had. So how about you, Adina? Well, I think I'll tell a funny one, and it, it actually was before we even began the heavenly journey. But um, I remember having this kind of just this picture, and I'm in the room with the Father, and he's just kind of sitting back in a chair. And I'm like a four-year-old, and I'm bouncing off the walls. Literally, I'm just going here, 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 here. And he's just sitting there calmly with such delight, loving me. You know, and at that time, I was really a workaholic. Um, and I, I'm a recovering workaholic. I'm doing better. You can pray for me. <laughs> and it, it was just this beautiful picture of him communicating his love and his delight in me, even in my, you know, bouncing off the walls everywhere. But always this invitation to go, you can come sit on my lap at any time, you know, you can stop and rest. But, you know, I was just in that place of bounce, bouncing That's around. Real. So what I love, love, love about Father, oh, I guess another experience is uh, summer solving uphill with Father. And I think partly because I come from a workaholic family and we didn't have a lot of playtime. And so some of my times in heaven with Father is just play. Yeah. In fact, there was this one time, and I think we were doing somersaults at that point, but um, there was something going on in the room, and you know, it was when we were first starting to come out of the spiritual warfare stuff. But there was some stuff going on in the room, you know, and I wanted to do some spiritual warfare stuff. And Father kept going, come on, let's play. Come on, let's play. Tells you how much he was come worried on, about let's it. let's play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it was such a struggle. Because I wanted, I wanted to do something about something that was going on in the room. And, and finally just being able to relax and going, okay, we'll He's somersault uphill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's a topic that one of these days we'll, we'll get to. But um, we're, we're actually uh, kind of hammering it out right now and, mm -hmm. and putting some teachings onto our third series and the ultimate impact on uh, non-dualism. And, uh, you know, it is a big thing in that's crept its way yeah. into the church that really doesn't belong. And it's the idea that God has this arch rival and that they're going back and forth and sometimes God's winning, sometimes the enemy's winning. And it's just like, there's no, that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not the reality at all. Um, you know, so there, that brings up other questions. And it's like, well, why is there even any darkness there in the first place? So we, we deal with that in the third, third series. Uh, and I just encourage you to take a look at the Ultimate Impact series. You can go there, ultimateimpactmovement.com. Actually, uh, Marielle, if you don't mind putting that into the YouTube and to Facebook, just so people, if you want to check it out. Uh, a lot of great teachings on yeah. there. They're short. They're done, you know, 10 to 15 minutes a day. So you, you have four, four or five a week. And then ideally it's done in a group so that you can then get into a, uh, a group, whether it's online or in person, maybe gather three or four or five people, you know, your friends that are, are hungry and looking for more. And you can do this at home. But um, 
encourage you to take a look at it because it, it lays the foundation for what we're doing in in you know from a biblical foundation so that you if you're ever challenged on it you know you know that it's in the scriptures very clearly so Leanne I, I appreciate your question so has this impacted your family and your kids and we would say definitely Absolutely. Um, we were just with our our oldest son um, is married and uh, lives in Texas and we were visiting him and honestly he's a little on the skeptical side um, of things mm -hmm. and but we he was willing to do a court case about his business you want to tell about yeah him? I mean and this is not the first time this has happened it's almost pretty much expected in some ways yeah. but but uh, so we went he was one he's got a great business going and he was just wanting to kind of fine-tune it so that he had customers that he really liked you know because some of his d clients are pretty difficult but he was wanting to have uh, clients that he liked and he was wanting you know referrals. more referrals for, you know for those clients and uh, so we go into the heavens we present the case and he does some repentance for some areas that he probably needed to repent for which he did um, and uh, you know we go through the process and when we're done, he picks up his phone, and right there on the spot is a referral from one of his best clients. And yes. so, yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's not it's not the magic wand. Yes, you just have to yes. understand it doesn't happen all the time, but it is pretty common. And so, uh, Leanne is also asking, does it bring healing to you all? And so, I I would say, kind of with that, is is there's different different dimensions to who we are and what we're doing. So. If I do some work in the DNA uh, regarding my healing, it can have an effect. But if I'm loading up on sugar and sitting all day and not exercising, I'm probably not gonna walk through it. And so there's a lot of internal stuff and personal stuff with healing that we need to do in cooperation with right, a court case. Right. <clears throat> I mean, I, I by engaging with my perfected self, I believe that I can uh, engage with my perfected self and actually have the DNA of my perfected self teach this DNA how it's supposed to operate in order to keep, you know, a virus kicked out or to, uh, you know, help with my joints. I had some, I, I, you know, yeah. arthritis was starting to come in and, and I'm like, no. <laughs> and so I just continued to engage and after about a couple months, it's been gone. I mean, it's been gone, gone, gone. So I believe that very thoroughly, that by engaging with my perfected self, that I can have that DNA, either teach this DNA or replace this DNA, so that I can move forward in becoming more like him. And it's just this experience that I'm having in becoming like him, because the truth is, I am already him. Yeah. I got to break out of the lies. So yeah. just remember, it's breaking out of the lies. You're already full and complete and wholly perfect in you know, in Christ, and all we need to do is break out of the lies that we're believing that keep us from walking in the fullness of that. We so love being able to do this live and to get your questions. Unfortunately, yeah. because we're traveling and we're going to a lot of conferences, we won't be able to do this as much as possible, but keep in tune, and we really want to, you know, walk through this with you. One more question from Leanne. Actually, there's another question. I just, I'm not going to completely answer it, but I'll address it a little bit. Go ahead. So she's saying, I met from trauma. Our family is still in process of healing um, from a lot of trauma. So I was wondering if it could help. Definitely. Yeah. There's, you know, I would say that is a level. Um, there's also, you know, walking your timeline with Jesus and the blood clearing of Jesus, clearing the memories and all of the trauma. There's a yeah. lot of internal work with that. And so it's, it's both and. It's not just like you do the courts and you don't have to deal yeah. with the work inside. And I, for me personally, and I know a lot of people disagree with this, and it's okay, but for me personally, I really believe in the idea that we are moving forward. And I used to spend tons of time navel-gazing, trying to figure out how to fix my bad life and everything that was behind me. And, you know, with what the healing that I've received, it's, it's focusing on the answers, which is in Yeshua, versus focusing on the problem. And that has just been a real, real big winner for me. Um, again, a lot of people feel like with Theophostic and some of the others that they have to go back and deal with that. Well, and it works for some people. And I'll address this too, is, is I do believe in the forward looking, but I know that I'm, I'm, deal I'm processing through some of my own trauma and but I'm so doing are it. Are you from, disagreeing with me? I, sort of, but it's both and. <laughs> it's looking That's forward, <laughs> and yeah, it's also yeah. being able to to look honestly mm -hmm. at that trauma. And 
look at it reframing everything from the place of love, from God's yeah. love. That's, and so yeah. able to see it's good. Good, that good, good. I went through that trauma, but there was purpose in it because it has to do with what he's calling me to do in the heavenly realm And you today. can only do that when you observe that from a heavenly perspective. Because yeah. if you're looking at it in the natural, there's some horrific things that do not make any sense in the natural. And I, we know that can be difficult. But. Yeah, and so I've shared a little bit of my testimony in different places, but in, in being able to minister in, in the heavenly realm um, to people who are in trauma right now in the spirit, is only because of overcoming and walking through healing from my trauma in the past, if that makes sense. And so now it doesn't matter if I look forward or backwards, I'm grateful and I'm happy yeah. and I, I'm, I'm not, I don't look back with, oh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so Muriel is asking uh, the, the link to the URL to get to the ultimate impact is, is uh, www.ultimateimpactmovement.com. Dot com. Somebody already had Ultimate Impact, so it's ultimateimpactmovement.com. Uh, that's what will get you to the, the page so you can check it out. There's some free videos there. You can take a look, see if you're interested. Uh, and then the other question that someone had asked, this was from Susan, says, Engaging the heart chakra, can you, can y'all, can y'all <laughs> speak on that? I don't know if that came from uh, Muriel's translation or if that was from <laughs> Susan, but, um, you know, I really like Nancy Cohen's look at things that um, wherever you find anything that has any power or authority on it and it's been twisted and it's being used in darkness there is a righteous real yeah. and so what we've learned is that what some would call the chakras uh, Nancy Cohen calls them the seven seals yeah. and there are the yeah. seven spirits that, because there is something to that we don't I don't understand it but there is something to that and so you know that heart uh, spirit would be one you know to engage with because we want to understand cardionosis we want to understand one another from a heart level mm -hmm. uh, I really don't have a lot to say on it because I have not studied it very thoroughly and I'm not talking about studying the chakras I'm talking about studying the seven spirits and their existence and how they operate in us the righteous real yeah. we do need to learn about that yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, it's been great to be with you. Thank you for spending your Friday evening with us or whatever yeah. time zone it is. Right, whatever time zone <laughs> where you're you in. are around the world. <laughs> but yeah. we love you. We honor you. We thank you so much for being on this journey with us. And we're here for you. Yeah. Love each and every one of you. Bless you all. And uh, we don't have it up here. But if you want to visit our other website, it's uh, kingdomtalksmedia.com. All right. We'll see you next love you time. Love you all. Bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.